Hey everyone, welcome to a new Let's Play of Crusader Kings 2. I'm Sandy Stagg, thanks very much for joining me. Let's get the boring bits out of the way. Uh, first thing is, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot, supports me on YouTube. If I see you're enjoying stuff, I'll tend to do it a bit more. So, let's get these uh, Let's Plays up there. We're playing today on version 3.0.1.1. You can see it over here at the bottom left of the screen. Uh, this came out about a week ago. It just fixed a couple of patches. The, uh, co sorry, a couple of bugs that came out with the patch version 3. Uh, the new update for Crusader Kings. Now I've had this game a number of years. I don't say I'm particularly good at it. I just really enjoy it. Um, the reasons I enjoy it is. Originally it was a kind of conquest game. So you'd go around trying to take as many holdings as you can uh, things like that change the whole map my kind of color um, but now over the years it's been massively added to by those great guys at Paradox um, with all the DLCs we'll talk about them in a minute um, but yeah it's just become a really good role playing game you can play along with the traits and that's something I tend to do um, I like to have a little backstory, I like to do a little what if with history as well. Um, and you can do that with this game. And the game runs from 769 to 1453, which was the fall of the Byzantine Empire and the fall of Constantinople. Um, generally accepted by many historians as the end of the medieval era, although different areas have different, slightly different dates. Um, but we're going to play from a slightly different date. We can choose any day, any month, any year within that period, generally. Um, and we're going to play from a specific date, which you'll see in a minute um, when I give you the backstory. The other thing that I will shout out, give a little shout out to, is over here on the right, you can see I'm playing with a mod. It's the only mod I use. Um, the mod is called Patron Scooter by Solo. It's available on the Steam Workshop. Fantastic little mod, really, really like it. Adds thousands of historical um, coats of arms to the game. So your historical characters all get their coats of arms. The coats of arms of all the counties, duchies, empires, kingdoms, etc. They've all got a little tweak as well. Um, and it's compatible with the ruler designer. So you want to make your own person, make your own dynasty to play as. You can adapt a historical uh, coat of arms so you can choose from thousands really really good mod thoroughly enjoy it um, thoroughly recommend it so make sure you get over to the steam workshop and download it now the backstory to this game um, as you saw in the start there we're gonna play as Edgar Atheling not many people know about Edgar um, one of those forgotten people of history so I'm gonna give you the backstory while I load this up because in the original game he's an unlanded character so I've had to tweak it slightly um, I've given him some land he's only a count I haven't given him too much still want to make the game relatively difficult as if it isn't difficult enough <laughs> and um, and yeah without further ado while I load this up we'll cut over to the backstory
Okay guys, so there we are, there's the backstory for you. Um, Edgar Atheling was the only heir of the Great House of Wessex, still alive after 1066. Um, his grandfather had been Edmund Ironside, who was defeated and killed by uh, King Canute of Denmark, who captured England in 1016 and ruled the Danish king, ruled England until the return of Edward the Confessor. Uh, obviously Edward is well known for starting the tumultuous events of 1066, ending with the Battle of Hastings. So, as you can see, um, I did say we'd give a little little speech on the uh, on the DLCs that I've got. I got quite a lot of them, um, haven't got them all, so I've got Sword of Islam, Legacy of Rome, things like that. Um, a lot of these the ones with the shield are on the outside are recommended. Um, I've got most, I haven't got all. I tend to kind of get the ones that are either on sale, because it can be quite expensive when you start buying all these DLCs. Um, but also, tend to look at the ones that would generally interest me. So, for example, the Rajas of India or Jade Dragon, playing on the far east of the map there. Um, not really my cup of tea. Um, and obviously the newest one in the Holy Fury that came out with version 3. Um, haven't bought that yet, so. But we'll play along anyway. Um, we're starting on the 1st of January 1071. Um, the only twist to history that I've put in there on the backstory is um, the rebellion, the great rebellion of the northern lords, the northern earls. Never really met William the Conqueror in battle. Um, they tended to use guerrilla tactics, um, hence why William the Conqueror ended up burning half the north. And Edgar himself went into exile in Scotland. Um, he tried a couple of times to push his claim, but never really got anywhere. So we have adapted it slightly by giving him a piece of land. He's got here the county of Somerset. Before version 3, Somerset and Bath were the same uh, one county. A lot of the counties have changed. And they've been split up a lot more. Holdings have been put in, for example, Hull, Yordale, Leeds, all that was originally York, so York was a lot larger. Um, and that's happened across the world, not just um, in England and on the British Isles. So without further ado, let's get this game uh, let's get this game going, guys. Let's uh, let's play CK2. Okay, so here we are. Um, now, I'm kind of guessing a lot of you have the basic idea of how the game works. If you don't, um, you play as a dynasty. We are the Great House of Wessex. There you can see the um, historical coat of arms of Wessex. Also with the uh, Patrum Scooter mod, we got a slightly different border to uh, all the different holdings. Um, I think it looks nice, it's a good touch. So yeah, this is the guy we're playing as at the moment, there's our traits, so we've got just, proud, proud's a good one, um, even though it's a sin, it only gives you a, a boost to stats, so it gives you, you know, good stuff, um, plus 0.5 in prestige, so it's not a bad trait to have, we're kind, gregarious, diligent, brave, and we got a martial trait, skilled tactician. So what we're going to do is we're going to play as a person with these traits. I'm not going to play as me. Um, not saying I'm not one of those things. <laughs> but we play as this person. And if our heir and as if these uh, Let's Plays continue, then we'll uh, we'll play with those particular traits. These are our basic traits on the um, our stats on the right here. Um, so yeah, we're we're not great at learning. Mm. And our intrigue is. Mediocre, it's not great. We got pretty good martial skill though. Um, obviously, a bit of info here you got your domain size, so two out of three. Uh, we can hold three titles. We got two, we got Somerset and Bath. We got no vassals. Um, we got 1400 men, which is uh, pretty useful. 77 gold, 183 prestige, 45 piety. So there up at the top there as well, on the right hand side, top corner. Um, these are the things we need to action, so these are like the little um, reminders of stuff we got to do. 
So the first things first, we want to choose a focus. So we want to choose something that's going to give us a boost. Um, so we're going to click on family. That gives us a boost to fertility, gives us a boost to health, and our diplomacy goes up a little bit. And the reason for that, we want to do that really, is that we are the last of the House of Wessex. You can see that my heir is my sister. Just click on here. Queen Margaret of Scotland. And of course, being married, in a regular marriage, her is our Dunkeld's great house of Scotland. So we want to keep hold of our holdings. We want to make sure our house continues. Um, that's the only game over rule really in the in this uh, in this game is the death of a dynasty or the, the one you run out of landed characters of that dynasty so we don't want that um, let's choose an ambition to build a war chest make some money now we've got two sisters you can see on the bottom left here um, Margaret who we already talked about and Christina Christina is living in Scotland but she's not married yet chances are that the King of Scotland will marry her off um, and again it would threaten the extinction of the House of Wessex so we need to get married that's the first thing we need to do guys we need to get married now there's a number of reasons why you get married in this game for looks ain't one of them <laughs> what you need to do is find either someone with a county or a land anyway like um, Ingeborg here um, so your joint heir because it would be her heir as well as yours would claim both titles so you can kind of grow in that kind of sense um, another one that can be quite handy then is a non-aggression pact makes sense um, the little crown here so for example Urika or Uraka princess of Navarra she's got a claim on Navarra itself we wouldn't be able to press that claim as a count in Somerset but if you were playing as a duke for example nearby to Navarra then you could get a claim on the kingdom of Navarra and make yourself a king the other one you can marry for is stats um, someone with for example again she's got pretty good stats um, these stats half of your wife's stats are added to your stats to make your state diplomacy or state statistics so that can be a little boost as well um, so we want someone kind of with these um, another one is blood traits so you can get a genetic trait <coughs> excuse me um, and those can be good um, for example you can get genius which will give you plus five to all your stats or quick which gives you a plus three but you can also get the flip side of that coin. You can get imbecile, um, you can get which will give you basically zero on everything. Um, there are a number of stats, I, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but um, they're good to keep an eye out for, so we will do that. So let's find someone to marry. want someone about our age with 21 so there's a daughter of William no of Harold of Godwin house Godwin Heather but she's slothful and she's greedy so not great Emma the princess of France sister of King Philip hmm but her stats aren't all that good. I mean, it would be a bloody good ally. <laughs> um, let's keep looking. Sybil of Montgomery. Or Nest of Morgano. Well, she's a Norman, she's Welsh. That's your culture underneath. So you got your. Um, Dynasty name and your um, culture. Now, Nest has a claim on Gluasin, which is a province in Wales, a holding in Wales. Um, not bad stats, not bad traits. Or 
we could go with Sybil, who would give us a non aggression pack with Count Roger of Sussex, so we can potentially get an ally there. Not great Marshall, but then we've got pretty good Marshall. But she's got pretty good stats at the end there intrigue and learning, which would boost ours. Yeah, let's go for Sybil, see if we can marry Sybil. We can, but it's going to lose us 100 prestige. We've got 183. I'll take the hit. So let's uh, let's start this up, guys. The war is Count Edgar. Peace be with you. I accept your gracious invitation. Um, what I did do when I loaded the game to give uh, Edgar some stats, uh, sorry, some land, is uh, get uh, a couple of people invited because obviously you start off with no uh, no one in your in your court, which would mean we'd have no one to fulfil certain roles. Um, I'm gonna get onto that in a minute. Uh, we can collect the Royal Agility, so we can either collect 10 gold or we can collect 13 prestige. Gold's pretty handy at the start. So we've got married. Fantastic. Okay, the only reason I want to get this guy married pretty quick is um, he's an heir of the House of Godwin and despite the fact that that horrible bloke Harold took my throne uh, because of course the Witten had a choice when Edward the Confessor died and it, I mean I'm not going to hold any grudge against the guy Harold I personally like Harold um, quite interested in, in him and his uh, Ancestry and his uh, his achievements in life. Very interesting book. If you ever get a chance to read about it, always worth doing. Um, but of course, the real heir, I suppose, would have been me. Um, would have been our character here, Edgar, as the House of Wessex. Um, Edward the Confessor was his great uncle. Um, but Harold was obviously far more suited to the fact that there were going to be an invasion by the Vikings and uh, Harold Hadrada and um, the Normans and the William Duke of Normandy um, or William the Conqueror because Harold was a he'd been tested in battle he'd fought many successful campaigns in Wales um, he was one of the strongest earls in or most powerful earls in England at the time um, you know he was tried tested he uh, was a far better choice to lead at that moment than Edgar, who at the time was a 15 year old boy um, with no experience. Let's just close some of these. Um, you know, so I won't hold it against him. In fact, after Harold was killed at the Battle of Hastings, uh, 14th of October 1066, then the Witten proclaimed Edgar king. And Edgar was actually proclaimed king or recognized at least by the Saxon Earls or the remnants of the Saxon Earls um, as the King of England between uh, 15th of October so the day after Hastings to the 10th of December when he submitted to William the Conqueror realizing that there was no chance he was going to um, hold on to his throne. The Honorable Count Edgar may live in harmony with him and we've decided to offer you a position of commander I don't want to become a commander because, knowing my luck, I'd end up killed in a battle <laughs> with no air, and it would be game over straight away. End of the whole scenario. Okay, so now we've got people in our realm. Let's have a look at appointing a few people. Uh, you're some Bert, you can best that one. Uh, Steward, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bishop Adam. Fate smiles upon me, my wife suddenly was pregnant. <laughs> that didn't take long. Obviously, he knows what he's doing in that respect. To the magnificent Count Edgar, peace be with you. I would like to offer you a seat on my council as spy master. No, not yet. Uh, nice that you're offering me though. 
getting raided. I hate raiders. So let's raise the army. Go marching. We're starting to lose. Ah, there we are. Reinforcements arrive. 1300 to 700. We're leading the army. This pregnancy has made my wife Sybil much more talkative and cheerful than usual. She never misses the chance to chat with anyone within earshot. Unfortunately, most scholars agree that a pregnant woman should spend as much time resting. She should rest. I would like to have fun. She should rest. Victory. Captured someone in battle. Down the army. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lords of England have approved the institution of ruler imprisonment law. That means that the king can now imprison who he wants. At first, Sybil struggled to rest properly in her dark room, but after I had the brilliant idea of having a bar tell her stories from outside, the experience became a lot more bearable. And she's learning too. Great. Conquerors created Norfolk. We're at war with King Duncan of Scotland. Robin and Malcolm. No, I don't want to be a commander. It is good tradition to have some gossips around a pregnant woman in order to keep her calm and distracted from the tribulations of this delicate time in her life. As Sybil's husband, it's my duty to provide her with the support she needs. Yes. No. Well, we are kind, so yes. We'll spend a bit of money on our wife. King Malcolm died in battle against Mayor Herman of Hartford. Hmm. So where's my sister? She's got married to Count of Clydesdale. Not even to the Count. To the heir of Clydesdale. Hmm. What's my other sister up to, Christina? Duchess of Northumberland. Oh, she married the Duke. Who? Yes! We have a new heir. If you have a character dies now, you will play as Edmund Edgerson. Let's take the A out. Edmund. I think my father was called. No, my father was Edward. Edmund dies. Yes, he can be named after him. His grand, my grandfather, his great grandfather. Okay, so my sister's married Duke Morcar of Northumberland. So he controls this bit here. And he was one of the Anglo-Saxon earls that actually raised up in the Northern Rebellions, 1068, uh, in our little backstory. Um, as is tradition, my wife Sybil underwent her churching, and unfortunately her mood has not improved. Sure, she can calm down, she must deal with it on her own. No, let's help her. Uh, yeah, Morka um, replaced Tostig, um, Harold's, Harold Godwinson's brother, as the Duke of Northumberland in 1064, 1065. Um, before the events of 1066. Um, he actually led an army at the Battle of Fulford um, against Harold Hadrada while King Harold Godwinson was uh, down on the south coast waiting for William of Normandy to invade. Um, but of course he lost the battle. Um, him and his brother Edwin, who was the Duke of Mercia, and uh, that is why Harold had to march the army north to York, fought at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, which was a huge victory for the Saxons, uh, for Saxon England against the Vikings. Um, Harold Hadrada, the King of Norway, was killed. And tradition has it that they left in not as many boats as they came. Uh, it was a huge huge battle, great slaughter on the field at Stamford Bridge. Uh, and it was at Stamford Bridge that then Harold finds out that after waiting for months and months and months on the south coast, while he's up in northern England, 
guess who turns up but William, Duke of Normandy. Landed at Pevensey in Sussex, ends up fighting the Battle of Hastings because uh, Harold has to rush from Yorkshire back down, catches him on the Hastings Peninsula, but unfortunately things don't go uh, Harold's way. And well, we all know what happened in the end. The arrow in the eye, although that's debated. Uh, my mother-in-law, Mabel de Belem, died a natural death. Okay. Oh yeah. So, Count of Sussex, our father-in-law. Oh, he didn't hang around, did he? <laughs> Married already. Um, let's see if he'll form an alliance. Yes, he would. Feeling a bit uh, unprotected. That's always handy. I mean, he's got 600 men. We got 1,300. So technically, together, we could field an army of 2,000 if needed. Um, at the moment, I can't see why. But it's always handy to have, guys. Always handy to have. Okay, so let's have a look around here. Let's give out some of these titles. I crave solitude, I no longer seek the company of others, but I want to become a hermit. So I lose Gregarious. Gregarious gives you a pretty good boost, but not much I can do about it. Let's give this guy, he kind of doesn't like as much, this guy doesn't like as much. Give him on as well. Um, Cupbearer, you want a pretty good Cupbearer, someone that likes you, someone with pretty good entry because otherwise you end up dead. We don't want that. Uh, you're caught tutor and you want someone with pretty good or decent stats, pretty good traits, um, and likes you because they're going to be looking after your your ears. Uh, let's make cigarette. Oh, oh, the other thing as well is they will raise your ears or your children in the culture that they are. To the brave hunts master Edgar. Peace be with you. I have decided to grant you the Duchy of Somerset in recognition of his service. Great, so we become a duke. So what that means now is that obviously we've got a dukedom, uh, which covers just our provinces. So our shield has changed to the dragon of Somerset. Um, and we get the lovely Santa hat. Um, for some reason the Germanic Saxons and the English and Normans uh, Dukes get to wear this lovely little red number here um, Not my favorite uh, piece, but there we go The Santa hat has arrived already <laughs> Anti-Pope tends to be a lot of them with the Holy Roman Empire usually have a fallout with the, the real Pope in Rome Alexander II. So look at any plot sense, there's something we can do. Mm. Kill a lot of people in far off places in modern day Russia. Uh, nah, not really interested in those. Any known plots? No. Prisoners. Oh yeah, we've got that guy. He's been in prison for a year. Hmm. We leave him in the prison. So let's give our council something to do, guys. Um, we will uh, try and fabricate some claims here. See if we can claim the Morgan. A um, little touch here with the game as well is your culture name or the name of the province can change slightly with the culture um, so obviously at the moment being ruled by the Welsh the uh, Morgan is known as Morganug which it is in Welsh um, so yeah we learn something new every day Sandy Stag speaks Welsh <laughs> yes he does uh, Sandy Stag is actually from this kind of area here um, 
that's where I still live. Uh, one thing that really bugs me on these playthroughs is uh, a lot of the Celtic names of places get uh, mispronounced. Kind of gets my goat. <laughs> um, this place, for example, is always called Diveed. It's not Diveed, it's Doved. Um, y is an uh in Welsh. Um, so maybe one day we'll do a, a playthrough with me, Sandy Stack, in as king of this area, and we'll see what we can do. But let's focus on this one. Um, so what were we doing? We were doing our chancellor's council. Uh, Marshall, Marshall, you can go and trade your troops in Somerset. We'll collect taxes. Um, study technology. I tend to go, usually at the start, you end up going to like um, Italy. So the green bits here. Or uh, the Byzantine Empire here on the far right. Um, we'll go to and see if we can steal a bit of technology. Technology will solve is good. England's at war with France. This seems to happen on a regular basis, uh, as we know historically. <clears throat> and it looks like England is winning. 465 men to 6,000. So, bit of a paddling or a pasting there. Okay, so our heir is of our dynasty. Um, if I hover over our coat of arms here, you see that Edmund Edgarson, so our son, is uh, first in line. Um, but our sister's son, one of the Dunkels of Scotland, is second in line. Um, pretenders or other claimants to the throne can be a bit of a pain in the backside, um, especially later on. Especially if you got if you're hated by your own vassals and your um, trades aren't very good, then you tend to get toppled um, by a revolt. I've been spending more time with my wife lately, and although we did not marry for love, it can tell, I can tell it is growing between us. Oh, nice. We're in love. Isn't that lovely, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Up some father, father calls Edmund, pulling at my arm, pleading to play with him and his latest toy, oblivious to all the important work I'm in the middle of. Yet, how could I say no to such a sweet, innocent exuberance? That's because we're such a nice guy. So, let's get some good commanders here. Um, we've got two 14s, so uh, 23. What I am going to do is click this little button here leading armies. We will not let ourselves lead armies, uh, not until we've got a couple of heirs. What we really want is an heir and a spear. Uh, two boys. However, because of the laws of our area, Gabalkind succession, uh, not my favourite type of succession, if we did have a spear son, then he would inherit one county and the eldest son, Edmund, would inherit the other. He'd also inherit the duchy, so he'd be the ruler of his brother. But it does kind of narrow our strength a little bit, so always handy to build your own holdings up. Um, so the castle of Taunton, that's our capital, marked by this little, uh, here we are, current capital. Let's improve our capital a little bit, so. 50 infantry and plus 50 archers. We will do that. Our gold there, ticking over nicely. Income at six. <coughs> Expenses at one and a half. So we've got a balance of four a month coming in. Pound a week, boys. Pound a week. So at the start it can get a bit slow, um, I apologise for that, there's not much I can do about it. 
Um, tends to be the way the Crusader Kings kind of goes. It tends to slow at the start, and then all hell breaks loose. The more the more people there are in your dynasty. So um, obviously, at the moment, we've got no major threats. We've got no major problems. Um, there's a peasant revolt in Kent. There's a French army of six, nearly seven thousand in London. Taking Westminster, taking London, taking St. Paul's, and they're laying siege to Tottenham. But we are winning the war at 73%. So. Yeah, we're at 100%. Uh, obviously, it's an automatic win. You can force someone into peace to surrender. Uh, minor title. Yeah, we'll give him a job. Okay. Oh, these black clouds of death have appeared in Somerset. That is, my friends, an illness. Let's have a look at the epidemics map. Yeah, you can see we're marked as red. Smallpox has broken out. Just where we don't want it in our area, so we could close the gates. Now, we close the gates lock ourselves in the castle but people don't tend to like the fact that we've made ourselves nice and happy um, and safe but we've left everyone else on the outside of the castle so let's see if we can build a hospital it's going to cost us quite a bit oh. these are dark days my son edmund has been beset by oozing lesions and a high fever i've been informed he that his affliction is indeed smallpox. Get the court decision. We don't need our son dying. Let's give him a little boost to focus. I tend to give kids um, thrift, especially at the start, uh, thrift or humility. Give them a little boost to uh, to things. Thrift is a pretty good one to have. Minus a hundred. Oh, jeez. No. I need more kids, not to get him married. King William has inherited the county of Maine, other titles from King Camp Robert. Robert has died of an infected wound. Robert is the eldest son. So historically, um, Robert became Duke of Normandy, and his younger brother William became King of England. Now we're not going to have that problem, or at least not historically, because Robert is no longer, well, no longer within the realms of the living. Twaldensian heresy has appeared in the county of Oxford. Hmm. Well, not my problem. So 95%, even though. France has uh, captured quite a lot of southern England. Who's this? The army of Count Roger of Kent. How many troops have they got? 400. Now, if I raise my troops to give them a hand to get rid of that revolt, um, chances are I get jumped on by the French. Uh, the Catholic Church's men are not always easy to deal with. I need to make sure that I have their blessing, and I have both my wife Sybil and my court chaplain give me advice on how to earn their approval. Sybil suggests I offer to rebuild the church. Agents a chance to get the trade contempt. Or Adam suggests I try to scare him into submission. No, I'm be nice. Got a contempt trade, so I'm pretty content with what I've got. Richard of England has observed the title of County of Bexin. So I think that's what the war was about with France. Is this 
area here. Okay, Richard has been offered the... Yeah, so the next son has become Duke of Normandy. Uh, his younger brother, William. holding. Oh, the king's turned up with his 8,000 men and just given those peasants a damn good thrashing. 100% that'll be over in a couple of minutes. Um, what happened to my sister? So one son is dead, died of pneumonia. My nephew. Brother to the new King of Scotland. I think we got different mothers. Yeah. Um, okay. What is Morcar up to? Would Morcar offer a non aggression plan? No. In 61, new mother Agatha Rurikovich died a natural death. Sad. So, Prince Bishop Morka. My niece, Elgifu. The Lords of England approved the institution of the Rule of War Declaration, so now uh, William can declare war without council approval. And I've inherited my mother's claim on the Kiev and the Rus. Um, don't think I'm going to be able to push that from here. Let's have a look. Just have a laugh. So my cousin. <clears throat> no, he has 4,000 men. I have Ooh, not even two. 1900. So I don't think we'll be pushing that one yet. Seems that smallpox isn't going to bugger off. Consumption next door. Camp fever in the south. Lovely. <laughs> Let's have a look how strong we are in terms of our realm. So let's have a look. Um, this is quite handy to see. So we are the yeah, we're the second strongest duke uh, militarily, even though we're one of the smaller areas. Oh. Give me on the auto save. Um, I got the auto save set for every year. First of January. This is twenty nine per cent of twenty one per cent from me. The next one is the Duke of York. A rumor about a spy sneaking around my own castle has confirmed this morning when I caught red handed. I'm not concerned, so again, piety. Behead him, get ruthless. Lose piety, gain prestige. Beheaded. Um, the Duke of Warwick, 12%. So he has 1,200 men. Um, he has 1,300 men. I have 2,200 men available to him. A dull pain begins to throb behind your eyes. I've got a headache. Slight knock to the old uh, health there. Bishop Adam of Glastonbury is confident your symptom is not due to a serious illness and that it will soon pass. Nevertheless, you will receive some mild treatment. Very well. To relieve your headache, Bishop Adam ordered you to lay down and rest. I'm glad I hired him. Excellent treatment symptom. Let's have a look. 
She's giving us a boost to plus two. Nice, so that counteracts the uh, the old headache. A good night help over here, the stable master and a courtier's animated discussion. Something about a horse and a payment due today, but the courtier insisted on paying the stable master later that week. I should interfere. I settled the matter between Prince Edmund and my stable master. I tried to be as just as I could, but they still want to speak to each other. Well, but Edmund will like me a little bit more. an interesting button too here um, if you're ever playing the game and you're playing a historical character um, but somebody you're not quite sure of then there is a Wikipedia link button you can click on that have a look at the old Wikipedia page of, about that uh, particular ruler or person and uh, yeah educate yourself a little bit more on the history of medieval Europe your pressing headache has gone away and you can focus your mind on things. Great. Our headache's gone. And that's how I found Edgar, actually. Um, originally, I was uh, trawling through, as some people do when they're bored, um, trawling through Wikipedia and uh, came across an article about Edgar Atheling, which was really interesting. Uh, and then I started reading up more about him. Um, he was originally born in Hungary. His father was in exile after, of course, the Danish King Canute took uh, the English throne. Uh, and then in 1057, Edward the Confessor had no heirs, uh, no children of his own. He found out that his nephew was still alive in Hungary uh, and invited Edmund, sorry, Edward the exile. Uh, yeah, there he is. Edward back to back to England to to be his heir. Um, unfortunately, within a couple of months of uh, Edward arriving in England, he mysteriously died under suspicious circumstances. Read into that what you will, ladies and gents. Um, probably bumped off in the night. <laughs> uh, yeah, but. His six-year-old son, then Edgar, who we're playing as, um, was officially, unofficially the heir. Um, obviously, Edward the Confessor never really got around to proclaiming an heir or getting the Saxon Earls to um, support his chosen heir for the Kingdom of England, which, of course, when he died in January 1066, led to all the debate and invasions and uh, the tumultuous period that, of course, everyone remembers with the Battle of Hastings. Uh, your liege's council is discontent. Discontent until... Ah, there's been a change. Succession always makes a council discontent. Richard of England has cleared the war from Northumberland. It looks like William the Conqueror oop, has died. Vanished without a trace, 1077. So Richard, not William, as history uh, has William Rufus, Richard of England is now king, who was the Duke of Normandy. Obviously, he's given that away now. Uh, who's he given that to? To a cousin of his, Duke Hugh. Hugh the Hunchback. And that's one of those blood traits, those genetic traits. Um, they can obviously be seen by the heart shape rather than the circle shape. They're learned traits. He doesn't really like me much. Thinks I'm a foreigner. Well, he would. I'm an Anglo-Saxon. He's a Norman. 
He's inherited the county of Northampton. Hmm. Not getting many claims out of our... What are you doing, by? Uh, let's get a claim on Wiltshire. Message from the king. To the kindly hunt master Edgar, peace with you, proposed Drogo de Brevere becomes the guardian of your son, so he's raised as a Norman Catholic. No. He will not be a Norman. He will remain an Anglo-Saxon. Because eventually, I'd like to think that we can take our uh, throne back. We might not take it back, but hopefully one of our heirs will. Offer you a seat on my council. Title of steward. We're pretty good steward. Stewards aren't that dangerous a job, so yeah, we'll take that. Um, let's have a look. So now we're the steward of England. We're pragmatists, so let's do that. Duke Hugh is returning a favour to King Richard, so he can obviously work with the king. As a reigning duke, I really have any spare time. For my little son Edmund, I would move heaven and earth. Family first. Damn right. As a well-known TV series say, TV series says, sorry. Um, winter is coming, so we must stick together. Recently, I've noticed the state of my son Edmund. I have just been informed of the cause of his aches and pains, and he has the flu. Ah, call my court physician. Of course, in medieval times, the flu was dangerous. Well, I mean, it still is dangerous. I have decided to institute the title of revocation allowed law. All this needs support of my other vassals. Let's have a quick look at how they're going to vote. Um, more cars voting no. At the moment, I'm voting yes. We'll vote no. Because what I don't want is him taking my titles. Your court physician Adam has gained widespread reputation after having worked in your court. He is now considered a renowned physician. So he gets the uh, renowned physician trait. Excellent. Did he save my son? That's the question. Successful treatment. Fantastic. <coughs> Not a lot's happened here, guys. We've got one, um, one child. Which is a precarious position to be in. Um, I was hoping we'd have had more than that. At least a couple of spears, even if they were, even if they were girls. Um, girls can be married off matrilineally. That means that their children take on their mother's dynasty, um, and you can save your dynasty that way. It's always a handy way to, to add uh, potential claimants or um, potential uh, characters to your family. During a particular heated mom argument in the council, you stepped in as Prince Archbishop Walkerlin of Hampshire was making a fool of himself. He managed to sue the debaters and win the argument for him. This turned out to be a great move on your part. He now feels indebted to you. Now, when to call in the favour? So we get favour. Now, obviously, see <clears throat> the House of Wessex and Wessex as the area have relatively the same uh, coat of arms. Obviously, I'd like to think that eventually we'll get this back, make it our main holding. Um, but for the moment. <laughs> Our Chancellor isn't doing a very good job. I'd have thought he'd have done better than this. Uh, yeah, he's slothful. Let's make Sigurik our Chancellor. It's only one point down, so not too bad. County of Wiltshire. My liege, the people of Flor Florence have a progress beyond your own technological level. I've managed to study their advancements and the documents enclosed here should help you reach their level. Oh, this is to your satisfaction. Great. So it gives us a 33% chance 
of gaining 50% or 50 points, sorry, for either of the technology boosts. Um, what I tend to do now before we have a look at that is move him because once they generally get technology, we end up uh, with them getting captured and he's pretty good. You don't want your spy master getting caught. Prince Morgar has usurped the title of County of Northumberland from the Duke Cross Patrick of Lothian. According to your Marshal, Ethelsig of Burnham, the peasants of Somerset have, are having frequent troubles with highwaymen and wild beasts. He suggests constructing a series of outposts along the roads of Somerset. The peasantry would feel safer and would lead to more peasants moving to the country. Safe peasant, productive peasant. So you lose seven gold, and we can afford that, that's not a problem. Or have no money. Prosperity increase, local revolt risk down 5%. Yeah, no, we'll do that. Seems a pretty good idea. My liege, the people of Milan, Milano, have progressed beyond your own technological level. Great. Well, we can't move him yet. Uh, it's a six month cooldown when you assign a councillor. To do something. Um, so as you can see here now we can't do it until the 13th of September. Minister the realm, obviously construction. Let's have a look we could. Let's go that one. Uh, let's build a barracks. A bit of money. Could do with more troops. Always good to strengthen your own holdings. But make sure you're wary of which ones you do, because uh, obviously under Galbakine, for example, you may lose those holdings and eventually your younger son becomes stronger than your older son, who you'll play as. And of course, you might end up losing your... Uh, your holdings. So, you know... Double-edged sword, guys, double-edged sword. Any factions in England? Independence. So the Duke of Norfolk wants independence. King Godwin, Prince Godwin for England. Count of Persh. Increased council of power. We could back that with more card. Gavel kind of succession. Your steward has collected a special tithe. Get some more gold. Again. Generally move him then, especially if you've got two, so we'll move to the other county. Um, otherwise, you get the, you tend to get the um, attack by Stewart, and you get the uh, revolt risk boost. And we don't really want to revolt. Message from the king, appoint commander, no. Not gonna help you fight your wars. At age 67, your father in law, Count Roger of Sussex, died in suspicious circumstances. King Richard has formed an alliance with King Martin of Navarre. Mm hmm, I wonder what happened to him. Obviously, sounded as if it included water. <laughs> So now our brother-in-law is the Count of Sussex, so let's see if we can get a non-aggression pact, yes. Waldensian heresy has appeared in Northampton, not our problem. To the brave Duke Edgar, I, Count Roger of Sussex, accept your proposal. Let's see if we form an alliance. Yes, he would. He has no patience. Hmm. He is deceitful, mate. The Great Hunt Master Edgar. I count Roger such a proposal for an alliance. Great. I wonder if we can get an alliance. Oh, it's down to in grey. Um, with more car yet. No. What about if I send him some money? 40 coins. Yeah, we can do that. 
no political concerns. Well, I just thought you want the help. King of Scotland has been excommunicated. I could declare war. I've got more troops than Should we do it? Hmm. Tell you what, guys. The pause now, 24th of April, 1080. And we'll possibly declare war on Scotland because an excommunicated war. Let's have a look. If we win. We gain 50 prestige, two, uh, 50 piety, 200 prestige. The excommunication lifted. King Duncan abdicates to Donald Dunkeld. Donald's not our. So you give it up to his heir. But he's probably a better king than this guy. Hmm. He's not our nephew. So we won't do that one. Uh, is the guy married to our sister? Yeah. I wonder if he would say. Yes, he would. Let's, uh, let's play on a little bit just to get that in position. And form an alliance. Yeah. According to Chancellor Sigurid, the peasants of Bath have started a delightful tradition, where the peasantry from several villages meet up and dance, feast and pair up for future marriage. By promoting this tradition, Sigurid believes the county will develop a strong local culture and attract more people. I will support it. Hmm. He's accepted the alliance. So here we are guys, 12th of May, 1080. Not a lot happened there, I can only apologise for that. Um, it's just the way the game goes. If you liked the, the, uh, the video, please like, share, subscribe. And we shall see you soon. Back here as Edgar Athling. Thanks very much for joining me, folks. And for now, a very, very, very good day.